Louis 25 on the dash, man. But I could do a hundred when in God's hands. We ain't never had no fear, might had to slow down. We just had to change gears and accelerate, 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 accelerate. Pressing on the gas, I ain't know we had a tank. I'm waiting on a blessing, I ain't looking for a break. It's the second weekend of 2022 and the Lord be praised. It's been kind of kind of crazy, but I'm still sensing that God is still moving and God is still going to do some incredible, incredible things. Obviously, I'm not here by myself. I'm always accompanied by an amazing studio audience, the faithful few who ride with me, who've been rocking with me over the past two years that we've been having to do this. But I'm coming up to you live right now. And I'm excited tonight. Our Kansas City Chiefs play their first playoff game of the 2022. Yeah. And we're super excited. Hopefully, prayerfully, we get that win. We better get that win. But yeah, I'm excited. Real quick before we get into um, the message, a couple of things I want to touch on. Uh, obviously, I wasn't able to be in person last week because I had a little COVID uh, contact tracing scare, but your boy is good. You know, I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm jovial. I can breathe. I, I, everything's great. So it all checked out good. Um, the house is good. The kids are good. You saw Ashton earlier. <laughs> He's good. Everybody's good. Lady J's good. And it's all good. So, you know, there is 21 days of prayer and fasting. And today is the seventh day, the seventh day of the fast. So you've officially made it seven days. I've I heard from a couple of you who this is your first time fasting or your first time in a while. And so you've completed one full week of 21 days. Hasn't the devotional been phenomenal? Man, every time I read it, I'm like, man, we need to get this published. Or Lady J needs to write up a whole bunch of stuff and start bringing some uh, extra stream of income or something uh, into the house because she's brilliant. She's a great writer. Um, but I pray, I pray that you've benefited from this communion with the Lord over the past seven days. I pray, I pray, I pray. I be also, 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 uh, Friday night was our first prayer and worship night, and it was so, so good. Somebody say, we only go up from here. We only go up from here. This coming Friday, I'm going to be right here with our worship team, and we're going to be praying, and we're going to be worshiping. So I want you to tune in Friday, 7 p.m. For, for the second night of prayer and worship. Also, before I get into this word, I got a whole bunch of announcements. Not a whole bunch, just a couple more. Before I get into this, I want to send a, a commendation to our marriage and family team this month, for those of you guys who've been getting text, this month we're encouraging all families um, to write a vision for 2022. And as they're participating corporately, we want them to take that vision, write it down as a family, um, post it wherever you guys need to post it, create a vision for the year. Um, and as you're doing that, continue to pray and continue to fast and be intentional about family time. This message that I'm getting ready to preach to you is going to put that into perspective for you. All right. Be intentional about family time. Be intentional about your finances. Be intentional about whatever the Lord has placed on your heart during this time. And last but not least, I need to talk to you about first Sunday. Everybody say first Sunday. First Sunday, February 6th. Now, I told y'all last week, I said, if you want to stay home, you can stay home because COVID upticks. And some of y'all really, really took that to heart. But I want to challenge you to get to the house February the 6th. It's going to be phenomenal, 1030 a.m. at uh, the gym theater. All right, who's ready for the word? All right, Father, bless your word. Bless everything about your word. Bless the hearer, the doer. God, um, take our, our church into a new place, into a new trajectory. Um, through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, 
I want to welcome you to weekend two of 2022. Like I said before, and this is our kickoff sermon series, spontaneously on the spot, instantaneously changed to driver's ed. And it's inspired by my daughter, Amaris. All right. And she's learning how to drive and I'm grieving. Her mother's grieving because it's like, how did you get 16 this fast? And so she's learning that driving is an art and it's an art to be able to accelerate and maintain control of the car at the same same time. And so with more speed to come, there's different levels of focus. With more speed, there's different levels of focus. And so in this sermon series, we'll essentially be learning how to move at the speed of God as we move deeper and we move deeper into this I know that you're going to come to learn that this is more than likely totally different than what you're thinking. Moving at the speed of God is totally different than what some of you are probably thinking. The reason we need to grab a hold of this is because one of the things I believe the Lord is going to do this year is he's going to move quickly. And so in this, we have now a responsibility to move with him as empowered witnesses of his gospel. And we have to receive that what he is doing is what he wants to do in the earth. So with that being said, my desire to all of you and everybody watching me right now is that you will allow Lady J and I, who's sitting right here, to be your driver inspectors as we learn to move at the speed of God. And this has heavy implications to our church, heavy implications uh, to our church. And hopefully you're going to glean something from that. Now, first, let me ask you this question. What exactly is the speed of God? What exactly is the speed of God? What is the speed of God? What is the speed of God? If you're watching, just put a question mark in the chat right now. Just put a question mark in the chat. What is the speed of God? Just put a question mark in the chat. What is the speed of God? What exactly? When I say we are learning to move at the speed of God, I'm not talking about chronological quickness. I'm not talking about chronological quickness. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about the speed of manifestation um, as in when the scripture uses the words immediately or suddenly or quickly when dealing with the way Jesus would perform miracles. I'm also not talking about the rapidness of God in seasons and times. I'm essentially talking about, however, the rhythm of God. The rhythm of God, the tempo of God, the Christological click track, if you will. The Christological click. For those of you who are recorders, you know what I'm talking about. The Christological click, click track of God. Yes, I believe that God is going to move quickly. Yes, I believe he's going to move quickly chronologically too. But I feel there's a deeper thing we need to understand and something else we need to implement. I'm talking about us getting in step with the methodology behind the movement of God. I want us to model his pattern. I feel that's for our house. I feel that's for our house. I want us to model his pattern. I want us to model the pattern of God. I want you to model the pattern of God. Yes, he's going to move quick. Yes, manifestation is going to happen faster than it has ever happened before. But behind God's method, behind God's movement and manifestation, there is a methodology. There is a click track. There is a pattern. And I want us to get with the pattern of God. And I believe God shows us this, this pattern in Matthew 11. Uh, we're going to start at 28 through 30. And I'm going to read it in the NIV. And so the context of this is Jesus was addressing Israel who were burdened and they were weighed down. Um, with the externalism and the legalism of the Pharisees and uh, with the consequences of guilt and, and frustration and shame and dissatisfaction that always goes along with legalism. And so they're tired, they're exhausted, they're broken, and they're moving fruitlessly throughout life attempting to please God. And Jesus shows up in Matthew eleven twenty eight and says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right. In the theme of driver's ed, we told you, Lady J and I, who's sitting right here, are your instructors. And since we are your instructors, the first lesson we're going to learn, and this is a lesson for the house, the first lesson we're going to learn is Write this down, pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Everybody say pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Slow down. This is for the house. And I believe one of the things that God is saying to us is, <clears throat> God is saying, you better learn how to break before you break. You got to learn how to break before you break. Moving at the speed of God actually means, watch this, slowing down, not speeding up. Some of y'all was like, God's going to move fast. I'm going to move fast. God, I'm going to do something. So I'm going to do something. I've heard other pastors this year say, uh, resting is not needed in this season. You got to go get it. You got to grind. You got to. And I wanted to punch him through the TV because I'm like, that is not essentially what the Lord is saying to his church. The Lord is saying to his church that you better break before you break. It is addition by subtraction. It is God's way of adding to you by by you choosing to stop. Pump your brakes, dial it back, slow it down. This word has been stirring deeply in me over the past several weeks and has been confirmed several times. You heard the five minute countdown. The Lord has declared that over the house, that this is a season of rest this year and beyond. But especially this year, you and I must establish the kingdom rhythm of rest. And let me confess this, though, before y'all think I'm preaching this because I'm a guru and all that. Let me confess this. I am not good at this. I'm not good at it at all. I'm not good at it. Due to my context of performance, um, value and worth was an accomplishing for me. I wasn't a very studious student, so I would be involved in other extracurricular things, and that's how I would get my shine. That's how I would get my, uh, my, my, my applause and all that stuff, and achievement and doing was rewarded in my upbringing. Everything else was considered laziness. So rest causes my ego, and rest causes my mind to scream loudly. I know I'm not the only one. I know I am not the only one who is watching me right now that you feel bad anytime you stop, that you feel unproductive and fruitless anytime you stop. We want to move, move, move. We want to get to where we want to go. We want to do it fast and we want to worry about all the consequences later. But what if God has something else in mind for us? City of truth, hear me as your pastor. What if there's something else that God has in mind? What if acceleration in the kingdom of God is not merely about speed as we know it? What if acceleration is more about depth? You hear the word accelerate, you think fast. But what if when God says accelerate, he thinks deep? Write this down. Speed is the enemy of depth. Speed is the enemy of depth. For those of you guys who are students, you already know what it is. You rush to do some assignments. You rush to do so, those papers. Some of you right now are about to cram as soon as this is over to try to turn in a paper by 1159 so it's not late. And as you rush, there will be no depth to that paper, but it'll get done. That's exactly how some of us have lived our lives. Speed is the enemy of depth. The faster you do, the more, sh the more shallow you become. The faster you do, the more shallow you become. Pastor, what do you mean? Things can be created in an instance, but they're shaped over time. Some of you who have kids, you already know. It didn't take no time to make the baby. 
but it takes years to shape the baby. And so speed is the enemy of death. And I've learned that I'm still learning that there's a pattern God has set for us to walk in from the very beginning. This is just my intro that I believe will be a major key for you and I moving forward in what the Lord is doing around us. Who's ready for it? I believe it's going to be a major key. Who's ready for it? You ready? All right. So what's God's pattern? What's the pattern? What's the rhythm? What's the code? by which we'll live this year as a church community and prayerfully beyond. What's the pattern? What's the code? Write this down. The pattern is rest. The pattern is rest. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want to hear about pursuit at the beginning of the year. Go get it. It's yours. Touch three people and say it's yours. Go get it. You can have it. You can go get the job. You can go get the degree. You can go get, you can go get all of that. You can. But I know you don't want to hear about stopping, but I'm about to preach to you about stopping. We want to hear about building. We want to hear about advancing. We want to hear about accomplishing. But if you hear with the ears of the spirit and you see with the eyes of the Lord, you'll know that rest is the key to all of those things. And here's the thing, as your pastor, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to know. I don't want us to be good at fast and then bad at efficiency. I don't want you to be good at fast. I don't want you to be good at being quick and bad at being careful. Come on, somebody. <laughs> There is a God-ordained way for humanity to flourish. There's a God-ordained way, and we, we're getting ready to discover the way. There is a God-ordained way for us as humans to flourish. And we're getting ready to discover exactly what that is. And the best way I could kind of illustrate it uh, to you is the other day, Lady J was having issues with her iPhone. I mean, it wasn't doing anything. It was moving slow. She couldn't open a certain app she was trying to open. I think she was still kind of typing out um, the devotional or whatever, and she couldn't get it open. She's like, what's going on with my phone? I need a new phone. I need a new phone. Something's going on. Somebody help me. What's going on? What's going on? And so I look at her phone. I'm like, baby girl, you do not need a new phone, first of all. I said, this is what I said. I said, Jessica. She said, what? I said, Have you? when's the last time you restarted your phone? She said, I don't know. I said, turn it off. Let it sit for a second and turn it back on. She turned it off. She let it sit for a second. She turned it back on. Guess what? It worked like it was brand new. Why? Because even technology, even the creators of technology, even technology submits to the pattern that God shows us that sometimes you just need to stop. Sometimes you just need to turn off. Sometimes you just need to restart start in order to function the way you were created to function. What's the pattern? Let's first establish this point. Write this down. Rest is a rhythm for God's creation. Rest is a rhythm for God's creation. Write that down. Rest is a rhythm for for God's creation. I'm telling you, the keys that I'm giving you is going to change your whole life because we're going to be moving. See, the truth is going to be moving. The Stevenson house is going to be moving. You better keep up. And the only way you're going to keep up is if you slow down. Sounds oxymoronic, don't it? But it's not. Sounds like it's crazy and clashing, but it's not. The only way you're going to be able to keep up with what God is doing is if you slow down. Rest is a rhythm for God's creation. Even in music, in musical rhythm, there's a name for when nothing happens. In music, there's a name for when nothing happens. It's called rest. For those of you guys who do music and understand music, the name for nothing is rest. Right? Somebody say man. So, so to get a beat, you don't just bang constantly. To get your favorite beat, Michael Jackson. Oh, wait a minute. How did I get that beat? what's in between those beats stop there's rest 
In order for it to be in sync and recognizable, you have to add space between sounds. For humanity, God made rest the space between the sounds. The rhythm of rest makes the loudness of life make sense. Without rest, music makes no sense. Without rest, life makes no sense. The rhythm of rest makes the loudness of life make sense. It's the only thing that makes life in sync and it's the only thing that makes life recognizable is rest. You don't recognize life until you rest. You don't recognize life until you stop. You don't recognize what God is doing until you take it in the heavens declare the glory of God that that we are captivated and in awe of what God is doing when we stop and rest somebody say man come on so how do you know this is important for, to God it's so important to God that God modeled rest for us he modeled it for us Somebody keep time for me, Edwin. Make sure I'm good. I don't want to go over time. God modeled rest for us. How long have I been up? Okay, good. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 2, 1 to 3. Go there. Go there now. I'm not playing with you. Right here, Eddie. Go there. You watching me right now. Pick up that doggone Bible, whatever. And go there. All right. Let's look at Genesis chapter two, one to three. It says this. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all of their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it. Why did he bless it and make it holy? He did it because on that day, he rested from all the work he had, from all the work of creating that he had done. That last line is essential to us not being legalistic, but I'm going to teach about that another time. Then God blessed and made holy the seventh day. Why? Because on it, he did something. He rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So first understand this. We understand that God is omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. That God is omniscient, which means omniscience, which means he's all knowing. That God is is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at all times. So God is God here. He has no beginning and end. He is alpha and omega. So God didn't rest because he was tired from work. God is eternal. God is never tired. God never sleeps. The scripture even says this. God never sleeps. God never slumbers. God didn't rest because he was tired. God rested, Lady J, to establish a rhythm. He wanted to establish something at the get-go. At the beginning, he wanted to establish something. The word rest in scripture means stop. It's where we get the Hebrew word uh, Shabbat or where we get the derivative Sabbath. It means to stop. It means to cease and desist. God wasn't exhausted. He was finished. I'm going to say that again. God was not exhausted. He was finished. Why did he stop? He was finished. He wasn't tired. He he didn't create everything and be like, whoo. Whoo, Jesus. What are we going to do? I'm tired. Nope. God didn't stop because he was tired, Daisy. He stopped because he was finished. He was finished with what? This particular portion of his plan. So after a good work was finished, God set the example of rest. After a good work, remember he called everything he did good, then he chilled. He stopped. So after there was a good work, there was rest. Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Come here. Could it be that the reason you are so exhausted and the reason you are so tired is because your hand, your hands are doing things that are okay and maybe beneficial to your life, but not necessarily a God ordained good work. It's interesting that God chose to set the example of rest on the day after he created man. It's interesting. 
The text says God blessed the day he rested. He blessed it because he rested. They told you. He blessed it because he rested. That's the only reason he blessed it is because he rested. He says, I'm blessing the seventh day, not because it's just the seventh day, but because I blessed it and made it holy because I rested. The text says God blessed the day he rested. The first, watch this, the first and second chapter of Genesis uses the word blessed only twice. The first time it uses it is connected to man. The Bible says, and he blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply, and he blessed them. Then the second time it's used, it's connected to rest. The text says God blessed the day he rested. So what does this mean? We know that the blessing of God isn't just some random separate happenings that make no sense and go nowhere. We know that. That when God blesses things, he's not just randomly blesses. You get a blessing, you get a blessing, you get a blessing, you get a blessing. It's not like a random thing. It just, it, 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 there is a rhyme and a reason and a pattern behind the blessing of God. Therefore, his blessing acts as a sort of uh, paper trail toward his purpose. You know what a paper trail is, right? Emails and text messages. If, you, if FBI wants to find a crime, they follow the paper trail because the paper will lead you to where the purpose is. And so... The blessing of God is sort of a paper trail toward his purpose. Pay attention. What do you mean, pastor? Pay attention to what God blesses because what God blesses is what God values. Pastor, you're going to have to prove it to me. God blessed marriage between a man and a woman. God blessed unity amongst community. The Sermon on the Mount talks about what God blesses. And in this instance, God blessed man and God blessed rest. In this instance, in one and two, God bless man and God bless rest. Why? He didn't bless the giraffe. He didn't bless the hippos. He didn't bless the birds. He didn't bless the fish. He blessed man. And immediately after he blessed man on the sixth day, he blessed rest. Not even to parenthetically insert this, that in order for Adam to get Eve, he had to go to sleep. But that's a whole nother sermon for a whole nother day. And so there's two instances God uses blessed in in Genesis, blessed man and blessed rest. Why? That's the question. And here's here's what I think. And this is just part of the reason. But I wanted to touch on this one today. As the plan of God unfolds in the earth. God set this example. He said, I created man. And while man is here and watching I'm going to stop. Why? Because as the plan of God unfolds in the earth, exhausted people can't move it forward. Here, here's man. Here, are you with me? Are, are you with me? Here's man blessed. Rest blessed. You see this man? Man, I created you. Watch what I do. Man, you're blessed. Now, watch what I do, man. Rest. Blessed. Why? Because in order for plan, God's plan through man to unfold, in order for it to manifest fully in the earth, it can't move forward by someone who's exhausted. Did you hear what I said? I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to do what God called me to do. I want the will of God for my life. What if I told you that the will of God for your life in this season was to stop? Pastor, there's got to be another will. You better find out what the else it is because that can't be it because I got too much to work for. I got too much going for me. You're hearing it wrong. Listen to me. Babies that constantly cry are either in a mess, hungry, or tired. Same with adults. You're probably exhausted. You're probably in a mess, hungry, malnourished spiritually, or tired. I remember the perfect time to ask my mom something was that I knew she would normally say no to was when she was tired. Why? Because when you're exhausted, you don't think straight. Ancient torture torture methods involve keeping people awake because you'll go insane if you don't rest. 
Bad decisions are made when people don't rest. And somebody is watching me right now wondering why it is you constantly make horrible choices. It could be because you're tired. Your mind is tired. Your heart is tired. Your soul is tired. Your spirit is tired. And God is wanting to establish a new pattern this year. And that pattern is involving you stopping, ceasing, desisting, resting, and enjoying what God is doing in your life instead of going after more being ungrateful, arrogant, and prideful. How much time I got? Jesus says in Matthew 11, verse 28, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's break this down. He said, come to me. What is he saying? This first is an invocation into, the, into a relocation. So my first question for you is, where are you going? He says, come to me. This is an invitation into a relocation. He's wanting to relocate you. He's wanting to take you out of exhaustion and take you out of burnout and take you out of fear and mistrust and doubt. And he's wanting to relocate you to where he is. And so the question I have for you is where are you going? Jesus says, come to me. That is an invitation into the right location. All you who are weary and burdened. What is that? That is believing in doing more than just being. So not just where are you going, but my next question is, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're weary and burdened and you feel the only way to get unburdened and unweary is to continue to do what got you weary and burdened in the first place. What are you doing? And he says, come to me, all you are weary and burdened. And he says, and I will give you rest, which means what? Rest is a gift. So not where are you going, not what are you doing, but the next question is what are you receiving? What are you receiving? What are you receiving? What, what are you receiving? What are you receiving? You you're probably are receiving the rewards of exhaustion. The rewards of exhaustion are usually depression. The rewards of exhaustion are anxiety. The rewards of exhaustion are fear. The rewards of exhaustion is sleeplessness, tiredness, irritability, lack of faith, lack of trust. What are you receiving? Jesus says, I'm going to give you rest. Rest is a gift from God. Then he says, take my yoke and learn from me. And this is re was really intriguing. This is really intriguing camera person. Um, because when you, when you hear this language, when Jesus is talking about rest, then he says, take my yoke. You're like, what is he talking about? You're talking about rest. A yoke is something you put on livestock. He's like, I understand that. But you have to understand how they trained livestock back then. They would take an older oxen and then they would take a younger, inexperienced oxen who does not know anything, pair it up with this older oxen who's seen it all, been around it all, and they would yoke that big oxen with that small oxen. What would happen? All of the weight would be uh, more distributed upon the one who knew everything versus the one who was new. So the weight would be on the big oxen because the farmer didn't want the weight on the young oxen because the young oxen couldn't handle the weight like the big oxen. They just wanted to train the small oxen to do what he saw the big oxen doing without all the weight on the oxen. So they understood that I'm going to pair him with somebody who could handle it. And this is the, this is the, the idea that, that Jesus is bringing. The other is a new ox. Naturally, the experienced ox will bear the majority of the load. And since the older one leads, the younger one doesn't have to wonder what to do he learns from his mentor and he gains the knowledge and skills to go and teach other oxen he says yoke with me he says let me disciple you I will bear the weight of the burden of responsibilities no matter how overwhelming it may seem to you at the time for my yoke is good and you will find rest and companionship in our work together but I'm gonna handle all the weight I'm going to handle the weight. 
He said, learn from me. How can I learn from you if I'm handling all the weight? He says, you're not being my disciple if you're carrying everything. The only way I'll disciple you is if you cast your cares on me because I care for you. And just follow me into freedom. Pastor, how is this freedom? There's freedom in this. There's freedom in the rest he gives. There's freedom in stopping and enjoying God. Jesus essentially wants us from underneath the burdens of sin and the burdens of the world and the burdens of the culture and the burdens of the stuff we feel will make us satisfied and the burdens of the stuff we feel will make us valuable and at peace. He wants us under that and he wants us free from this vigorous pace in life and he wants us free from this exhausting pattern. He wants us to get underneath his way and underneath his pattern and it's only only there that we find true freedom. The best way I can put it is like back in the day when I used to drive on suspendeds. Y'all know what I'm talking about, suspendeds. And some of y'all who didn't have that same temp tab for the past three years, I prophesy to you that you will finally get your affairs in order. Stealing. But anyway, you, okay, let's put it on you. You drive around with that temp tag. And you know that temp tag been expired for the past three years. You got that. It was today. You got that in 2019. You got that before the pandemic and you're still riding around with temp tags. But every time you pass a police officer, how you feel? This driver's head. Remember, I told you that, right? This driver's head. And you feel like, oh, my God, oh, my God, y'all shut up. You're talking to your kids like it's their fault. You didn't go take care of your business. Now, some of y'all have legitimate reasons. There's some of y'all who just being trifling. Let's just be honest. And you're telling your kids to shut up. Y'all stop moving. You turn the car music down. You're doing all this and you're just driving. Lord, please. Lord, please don't let them pull me over. Lord, please. Why? Why? Because you're under the yoke of slavery. You're under that, you're under that yoke. But, but I remember that was my yoke. But when I met Lady J and I got legit, I experienced freedom like never before. I was waving at police officers when I was legit. I was waving. At, hey, how y'all doing? What's up, officer? How you doing? I'm good. You can check my tags if you want. I'm clean. I ain't got no warrants or nothing. I'm good. And I'm not speeding. God bless you. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just you move different when you're out from underneath the burdens of lawlessness. And so this is what Jesus is trying to get us to see, that you will move different when you're not exhausted. You will move different when you're not carrying the weight on your own. You will move different. You will drive different. You will pursue different. You will go get it differently I'm not telling you not to go get it I'm telling you to do it differently do it differently somebody type do it differently in the chat I'm telling you to do it differently God wants you to go get the degree God wants you to go get the job God wants you to go get the practice God wants you to start the vision God wants you to fulfill what he's put on your life but he wants you to do it differently he does not want you to do it burdened down by things that he said he would carry And so, City of Truth, City of Truth, this is what it is. We're going to incorporate this into the house, and I'll tell you about it later as it begins to unfold. The Lord is still ministering to me about it, so I don't want to release it too early. But there's something we're going to implement into our culture that will be revolutionary, something that I've never heard being done before something that's going to cause us to have to trust God like never before something that's going to have to cause us to have to rely and depend on God me my family our staff we're going to depend on God like never before but I believe it is the will of God for our church in this season in this dispensation and time that God is calling our church into a place of rest to watch him move because when we're resting we move differently you move unburdened when you're resting you you move unhindered when you're resting you move not exalted you can unfold and manifest the plan of God in your life when you are moving without burdens on your shoulders God wants you to be the little learner ox he says let me take all the burdens you just move wherever I move freely and unhindered and that is what I'm prophesying over you right now in your heart in your life in your soul in your spirit I prophesy a release I prophesy a freedom I prophesy that God is going to set you free from unwarranted and unneeded burdens off of your back this is the year you see it come to pass but you're going to see it 
come to pass differently, that it's not going to involve you as much, that you're not going to have to do as much and you're not going to have to move as much and you're not going to have to force it to happen, but it's going to manifest as you stop. going to manifest as you stop. I want to pray for you right now. There's somebody watching me who needed to hear that. You needed every last word of that. You somebody who watching me right now. You don't know Jesus. You, you ain't never heard of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus took your sin, nailed him to his cross. He was buried on the, and on the third day he resurrected with all power in his hands. He died for your sin. And I want to lead you to the Lord right now. I want to lead you to Jesus right now. He wants to forgive you and he wants to take those burdens off of your back. He wants to take that guilt off of your back, that shame off of your back and he wants you to team up with him and let him teach you his ways without the weight of the world. In Jesus name, let's pray. Just pray this with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus name, I confess my sin. I believe that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you're the savior. And I put my faith and trust in your finished work on the cross. And because it is finished, I can rest. Just like in creation, just like in creation that you rested after it was finished. Because it is finished, I can rest. Um, and then in a minute and weeks to come, I'm also going to talk to you about eighth day rest. Because God rested on the seventh day which is the Sabbath, which is Saturday. Well, Pastor, why don't we have church on Saturdays? Because in the New Testament uh, Christianity, we understand that Jesus rested on the seventh day because he was buried. He died on the Sabbath. He rested on the seventh day, which is a Saturday, but he resurrected on the third day, which is a Sunday. So we believe in an eighth day rest. That is the eighth day. We believe in an eighth day Christological rest where we rest and worship in what Jesus has done. So this is why we believe that we worship on the eighth day, which is the Sunday that Jesus resurrected. And so we're going to get into all that and I'm going to unpack pumping your brakes and we're not going to get off this topic of rest until the Lord says the same. But I want to pray for you, those of you watching me. Father, give your people rest. God, let them know that this is a rhythm you've established. This is a pattern you have established. This is something that you want them to have. They need to trust you in it. God, give us the strength to trust you in rest. Give us the strength to understand that this is the way life is supposed to be, not tangled up and boggled down and heartache and sick and busted and disgusted, but free and able to move about the cabin freely without the weight of the world on our shoulders because we're trusting you to take care of all the things we can. And so God, I pray to give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Listen, those of you who are watching me and you prayed that prayer or you prayed the prayer to receive Jesus for the first time, you can text the word NEXT to 816-974-0013. You can click that link. You'll see it if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. You'll click that link. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and click uh, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel and get all the resources from our channel. Um, that you need. Also, if you're watching and you have not given yet, feel free to give a donation. If you're one of our members and you believe that this church has been a blessing to your life, I pray that you would consider partnering with us financially and giving a donation. You'll also see those links posted and you'll also see it right here on the screen. Listen, this is Pastor 83. I love you. I cannot wait to continue to unpack this message as God unpacks it to me. It's literally been cooking in me for weeks. And so I cannot wait. There's only a, poor, a third of my notes cannot wait um, to preach to you. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you next week.